This is part 13 of square roots and radicals. And we're going to do some problems where we are multiplying. So we might be using the distributive property, or you might have a binomial by a binomial, etc. So let's look at an example. How about 2 square roots of 3 times the square root of 11 plus 3 square roots of 3? Okay, so this would be a problem where you would use the distributive property. So we're going to do 2 square roots of 3 times square root of 11 plus 2 square roots of 3 times 3 square roots of 3. Now, what you have to be careful of is what you multiply on outside the radical is very different than what gets multiplied on the inside. So on the outside for this first one is just a 2, and I've got to do 3 times 11 on the inside, which is square root of 33. For the second one on the outside, I have a 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, let's, let's analyze the radicals here. I have square root of 3 times square root of 3. You could write square root of 9, and then in the next step, you would say, well, the square root of 9 is 3. Or you might recognize right off the bat, square root of 3 times square root of 3 means I'm just really multiplying by 3. Okay? So you can really end up with 6 times 3. Because square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. All right, so that gives me 2 square roots of 33 plus 18. Now, can you combine these any further? Well, only if they both have exactly the same square root or variable part. And in this case, no, 18 is totally separate than 2 square roots of 33. And it doesn't matter the order you write it in. You could leave it like this. But make sure the square root symbol only goes over the square root of 3. Or some people like to write the whole number first if there's a whole number and the other part has a radical. And that way, it's less likely that you'll put the square root symbol over the wrong thing. So both ways are completely fine. All right, let's look at this next problem. There are a couple ways you can do this problem. If you want, you could simplify the square root of 18 first. Or you can go ahead and do the distributive property first. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I do the distributive property. And watch how I do my multiplication when I'm multiplying the square roots together. So when I do 2 square roots of 6 times 5 square roots of 2, I'm going to have 2 times 5, right? That's the stuff on the outside. So that's going to give me 10. And it's true that you could multiply 6 times 2 or and write 12. Or in your head, you could just kind of factor out and write this as 3 times 4, because that's 12. Or you could write the 6 as 3 times 2 times this other 2. In other words, if you want, don't want to do any multiplication in your head. Because if you know if you have two of the same factor underneath the square root, one gets out. All right, let's do the same thing over here. So on the outside, I've got the 2 times 3. That's 6. But watch how I'm going to think about the inside. I've got 6 times 18. I don't know what that is in my head. I don't feel like doing it. But I notice that 6 goes into 18. So how about leaving that as a 6 and writing the 18 as 6 times 3? Then it will be easy because I've already written it as a perfect square under here, the 6 times 6. So from these two factors of 2, one pops out. And from these two factors of 6, a 6 pops out. So what's that give me? Well, 10 times 2 is 20. And what's left is the square root of 3. And here I've got 6 times 6 is 36. And that's the square root of 3. Now, can we combine these? Actually, we can, because they're both square roots of 3. So I'm just going to do 20 minus 36. That's negative 16 square roots of 3. So that's what it might look like if you did the distributive property. And of course, you might have multiplied 18 times 6 and then factored as 3 times 36. You might have, when you did this first one, 6 times 2 written 12 or written just 3 times 4. There are little variations. Now, let's do the same problem by simplifying the square root of 18 first. So I still have 
t squared is 6, and I have 5 squared is a t minus, let's go ahead and simplify that square root of 18. So that's 9 times 2, right? So a 3 is going to pop out. So I copy everything up to there. So I have 3 times 3 is 9 squared is a 2. Okay. Well, if you're doing order of operations, the next thing would be to just simplify inside parentheses. And you can combine these because they're both square roots of 2. So I have 5 minus 9, right? You could subtract the coefficients. That's a negative 4 square roots of 2. So I didn't need to use the distributive property. But now I have to multiply 2 square roots of 6 times negative 4 square roots of 2. All right, so now let's do that. Well, I have 2 times negative 4. That's the stuff on the outside. Now, what about the stuff on the inside? Well, I've got square root of 6 times square root of 2. All right, now, instead of me writing 12, 6 times 2 is 12. That's easy to do in my head. I'm going to write that as 4 times 3. So I can pop out the square root of 4 is 2. And negative 8 times 2 is negative 16, and square root of 3. So notice the way I did it, the second way gives me the same answer. That's a couple ways you could do it, and actually there's more steps you could do, depending if you had written out square root of 12, and then the next step wrote 4 times 3, or if you leave everything in prime factorization form. But in the end, this problem simplifies to negative 16 squared 3. All right, next problem. 2 plus 3 squared is a 5 times 3 minus 4 squared is a 5. Well, this is a binomial times a binomial. I'm going to do the FOIL method. Okay? And of course, there's all sorts of methods I've shown uh, for multiplication. There's the box method, there's the smiley face method, but basically you have four multiplications here. I'm going to do FOIL. So I have the 2 times 3, if you want to think of it as a smiley face, that's the first arc. 2 times 3 is 6. All right. I also have, in this second arc, the 3 squared is a 5 times the 4 squared is a 5. So let's see, what's that going to be? I'm going to have 3 times 4, right? And by the way, that's going to be a minus sign. It's going to be a minus. So 3 times 4 is 12, right? But I also have to do square root of 5 times square root of 5. Well, what's that going to be? Just 5. Remember, the square root of x times the square root of x is x. So pretty cool. When I multiplied 3 squared of 5 times 4 squared of 5, I ended up getting a whole number, 60. No squared of 5. But of course we have to do the outer and inner term here. Let's do the inner one. So on the outside I have 3 times 9, which is square root of 5. I'm sorry, 3 times 3, which is 9, times the square root of 5. So I have plus 9 squared of 5. And for my last term here, I've got, multiply these together. So I've got 2 times 4 on the outside. So that's minus 8, right, yeah, times that square root of 5. Notice I didn't do this FOIL, F-O-I-L. I, I kind of did the first, I did the last, I did the inner and the outer. But of course, that just means these would be in some different order. I did it so you could sort of see the smiley face. So anyway, just so you know, that's the first, that's the outer, that's the inner, and there's the last. And I happen to kind of do fleo. All right, so what do we have here? 6 minus 60. And these last two are like terms. 9 squared is a 5 minus 8 squared is a 5. So that's just plus 1 squared of 5, which we write as plus squared to 5. So 6 minus 60 is, these are the like terms. Square root of 5 can't be combined with anything, right? There's no other square roots of 5. So I could write that first if I want, square root of 5 minus 54. Or I could write it as negative 54 plus square roots of 5. It's up to you how you want to write your final answer. Both of them are correct. 
And so that's basically how to deal with multiplying with radicals, and we'll do some more on the next video.